what, you, what do you have there, Billy? This is Harm's Way. It's a actually excellent read. I'm about halfway through it. If you get the U.S. attorney who's run with the baddest of the bad yeah. out there, and he says that's a good read, that's pretty good. Yeah, I've had some U.S. attorneys be heroes in the books. Oh yeah, I like that. Uh, I like, that. I like the sound yeah, of that. That's good. Yeah, Bill Powell, leading man. By the way, <laughs> both of the people who brought in books for you to sign also brought treats today. Bill has brought in a uh, a box of goodies here, which includes uh, donuts. I think you said muffins are in there too. Uh, some kind of some kind of. Uh, other kind of baked goods, not donuts, so I'm not sure what they call them. Those, they're, 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 filled, they're filled with good stuff. I'm yeah. sure. The, Gil, Gilstrap readers are fine people, yeah. is what that says. That's what it says. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the books on the books uh, feed John's ego. The donuts feed all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, well stated, Admiral. Well stated indeed. Uh, Bill, so obviously uh, you were in office during the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. Uh, any indication if Donald Trump wins re-election, uh, one term removed, that you would uh, once again be in, a, in an office? I have no idea. I mean, that's it's one of those things that I never think lightning's going to strike twice. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, uh, you know, if, if you get that call, I guess you have to consider it. But I'm not, I'm not counting on it. Let's say that. But if called? I would certainly consider it. I'm retired now, technically, mm -hmm. from the legal practice. So the... Uh, it would certainly be an interesting, an interesting decision if I if I have that decision to make. Tell me about your time as the U.S. Attorney for the Northern District during the Trump administration. It was the best job I ever had, um, by far. I loved doing um, the important work for the district. I had uh, an incredible staff. I had incredible lawyers working under me. Um, and to be honest, you know, notwithstanding all the you hear what you hear on the media and you know political sh shenanigans that are going on, the only direction I ever got from and I took basically orders from the attorney generals, Jeff Sessions and then Bill Barr. The only thing they ever told me to do at any time was do whatever's best for your district. That was the only instruction I ever received. So, um, you know, I saw I didn't get any pressure to do anything one way or the other um, or not do something uh, that I should be doing. And I wouldn't have, quite frankly, I was old enough and I wouldn't have listened anyway. <laughs> so, you know, I'd, I'd say, okay, fire me then. I don't, you know, I'm going to do what I think is right. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think I did that in every, in every instance. Do you agree that that position should be a political appointee position? Or do you think it really, really doesn't matter what party the president is for that job? I don't think it really matters. I mean, the funny thing about that job is that it's, it's a political appointment, but it may be the most non-political job you can possibly have. I mean, you can't pot, you can't deal with the politics. Um, I mean, I think you, you will do a great disservice to the job and to yourself and to the office if, in fact, politics ever enters into any decision. You know, and I didn't, you know, political corruption, I didn't care if they're a Democrat, Republican, didn't matter to me one mm -hmm. way or the other. Um, never never thought about that stuff and uh, just did what's what, what I thought was right. And I think that. But doesn't politics right. figure into it at one level? If, if not guilt versus innocence, it's the priorities that one, one administration might really push on drugs and the other one might really push on firearms or you know, whatever the, those priorities might be. Yeah. I mean, there's overall the priorities. I mean, you know, the fact that they said, Oh, we're going to prosecute, you know, uh, op opioids and fentanyl. I think, Hey, great. We're West Virginia. We, that should be our priority right. uh, more than anything else. Um, and, you know, the gun stuff, you know, we'd always prosecuted that stuff, but beyond the major priorities, they gave me a pretty free hand to prosecute whatever I thought was was important. I, and I wanted to concentrate also on white collar kind of things because, you know, putting, you know, a thousand street level drug dealers didn't seem to me to be the appropriate use of resources. I was much more interested in going after higher up level people. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time on marijuana. I mean, my counterpart in the Southern District spent a lot of time on that. We had these discussions and my response was, well, marijuana is not killing anybody. So I'm, I'm going to go after the stuff that's uh, much more important to, Bill, the, to my one, district. One of the admirable qualities about you, and I've known you a long time, is that you have a very high moral compass. And that is obvious in everything you do. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone has the same compass of that that height uh, as you do uh, it bothers me a little bit that some of the political rhetoric rhetoric we're hearing now is there'll be retributions uh, against uh, uh, political opponents uh, if we have someone in office that is that does not view it as as honorable as what you do how much mischief could be done it could be a lot. I mean, you're, you're an assistant U.S. attorney or a U.S. attorney. You have extraordinary power. 
over people and their lives and what they, uh, you know, with their freedom, essentially. And, you know, if you, if you have sinister motives or um, improper motives, political motives, you can, you can do a lot of damage to somebody. And, and uh, I've, always, I've always been concerned about that, and, and it's something that uh, I think about a lot. Um, I mean, we, I didn't read the newspaper and think, hey, that's somebody good to go after. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's not the way you do it. You, you, know, you do it the proper way, investigations. What's the evidence? I've turned down prosecutions, many of them, to the chagrin of some investigators who think it's the greatest case since, you know, Dillinger. Um, and then others that um, we say, no, we got to work hard on this case and, you know, make sure, put some more resources on it. And I think you're, uh, I think we've been well served by the U.S. attorneys, but the, the format, the organization is, is open for, uh, uh, for less than honorable results. The fact that you are nominated by a sitting president and depend upon the political party, the Senate at the time. Uh, so it's quite possible that someone that does not have the high, high uh, criteria of professionalism that you do, uh, are there any checks and balances? Well, I think, I mean, I think you, you do have supervision from Department of Justice folks. And keep in mind that there are very few political appointments in the Department of Justice. There are a lot of them are professional, lifetime people on both sides, you know, whatever party. And even in the U.S. Attorney's Office, there are people there that have been more there, been there for more than 20 years and, and represent all kinds of political parties. So I think there's some internal checks and balances. If somebody was really going rogue or off the, off the cart or off the tracks, then that could be dealt with. Um, I've seen it dealt with. I mean, people make do stupid things and get get slapped for it. So you're saying there's a strength in the uh, the civil service part of the uh, of the government. Yeah, the professional cadre of of folks that have been there forever. You know, hardworking, honest, um, uh, professional people that um, uh, it's imp that job's important to them and they want to do it the right way. So I think yeah, that's always a check. And yet they've been painted by some as being deep state. Well. I'm not going to get into the politics yeah. of you know this yeah. nonsense that goes on yeah. today. Yeah. I just uh, I, fair enough. Quite, you know, one of the nice things about my hike recently was that I didn't hear a single <laughs> bit of news. <laughs> and let's get to yeah. that. And I and I, and I and I was happy for it. Let's talk about that hike. What did you do? Um, I spent from July 21 till August 31 um, hiking the Colorado Trail in in Colorado. It's a trail that goes from Denver to Durango. It's 500 miles, and it goes through some of the most uh, spectacularly beautiful. Um, remote uh, and rough country that we have. Um, it was all backpacking, uh, so it, it was uh, it was an extraordinary adventure. Something I've wanted to do for a long time. And, and what hotels uh, did you stay at while you were doing that? Uh, Bill? <laughs> I only stayed at four the entire time, and that was mostly because I was in towns that I had my resupply boxes there at the local post offices for food and other supplies. Um, so occasionally I would stop those times and kind of regenerate and uh, take a shower and sleep in a real bed and eat as much as humanly possible as much as humanly possible in every restaurant I could find because I was burning so many calories sure you're, you're, uh, what was your elevation climb while you were doing this um, it starts in Denver which is only about 5,000 feet and then about after about three days it gets to 10,000 feet and it never goes below 10,000 feet and we're between 10 and 10 and 14,000 feet the entire time it's 486 miles by the way, I just pulled that up. Except yeah. mine was longer because the the option at some point is you have to choose the collegiate east or the collegiate west, which it splits. The collegiate west being the more remote, more beautiful, and longer by several miles. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's the one I chose. So I did go far, further than the 486. You, you think of the altitude. You think of the elements. What about the animals? Are there grizzly bears in, uh, in that part of Colorado? No grizzly bears in Colorado. Okay. All black bears, and I did have one run-in with a black bear from about 15 feet away. We both surprised mm -hmm. each other. Luckily, he didn't want to get to know me any better, and he ran one way, and I ran the yeah. other. <laughs> All right, Good so move. I'm my background, I'm safety engineer and EMT. So I mm -hmm. want to go right to what was your emergency plan as you're hiking by yourself through mm -hmm. the woods at a certain age? Well, I have a, uh, I have a satellite communicator with a Garmin Rescue communicator so I had a button so if anybody if I if I became injured I could get rescued and they're really pretty good I had 
rescue insurance because if you take it away by helicopter, it's a rather pricey thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I made sure I got that covered. Um, and I have I have EMT training too, so I have um, a pretty good background in that kind of stuff. Luckily, easier to do on other people than on yourself. True. In fact, I did it on I I did some first aid on other people, and I got as a result got the trail name Doc because I had treat, <laughs> within the first four days I had treated like five people who were inexperienced and didn't know what they were doing. Ankle and, injuries and such, or what? Um, well, I'll give you an example. The first guy comes through and is, he says, I, I'm developing a hot spot on my foot. It's kind of hurt. And his buddy goes, ah, let it go. It, it'll turn into a callus. I said, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Just time out. It'll turn into a callus after a really painful blister that yeah, will probably yeah, get you off this yeah. trail. Uh, so I treated a bunch of blisters. I treated dehydration, um, things like that where people were, were a little bit in trouble, but hope they all did fine afterwards. So you must have seen many others on this trail. Uh, there were some days I didn't see anybody. Um, several days in a row, I would maybe I'd see one person. And then other days, I might see a dozen people. It just depended on the section I was on or where I was. Obviously, closer to town you got, you saw more people. But there are many instances in which you're in the middle of this trail. that You're 50 miles from any place. Um, and, in fact, there was, uh, I was there were some hikers that were with us that... One particular, uh, she threw. Her, she was a very experienced hiker. She threw her backpack off in the middle of the trail and just said, "I quit. I'm done. It's just it's too hard." Blah blah blah. And I, I walked up to her. I said, "Okay, you're quitting. That's fine, and you're entitled to make that decision. But we're 40 miles from a trailhead, <laughs> <laughs> so you need to pick your pack up and get 40 miles. And if you still want to quit, then you should quit. And you, you can't get an Uber out there. No <laughs> Uber. I said. I said the helicopter's not coming to get you because you 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 decide to quit and. Um, and she hiked the 40 miles and then she quit. Yeah. I mean, she, she was done. Have you hiked the Appalachian Trail? I've hiked several hundred miles of the Appalachian Trail, but never from beginning to end because it just would take too long. This was a six-week venture, which I thought I could, you know, do. And quite frankly, I didn't want to be away from home longer than that. Um, the Appalachian Trail from beginning to end is a five- to six-month journey. Sure. So how would you compare the two? Um there were there are certainly parts of the Appalachian Trail that are very hard, particularly in the northern section in New Hampshire and Maine. The um, I would say that, and I've spoken to folks that have done both, and the Colorado Trail is has much harder parts. Um, and then the altitude is obviously an issue. You're also exposed because the Appalachian Trail is mostly what they call below tree line. That is, you have trees and places to to be. Um, and in many, in, in probably half the hike that I was on, we were above tree line and we were totally exposed to weather and uh, other, other issues. Did you get much weather? We got slammed probably two and a half, three weeks worth of really bad weather, rain, wind, cold, hail, lightning, thunder. Um, the most scared I've ever been was being caught on a mountain pass with, and I'm never the tallest thing any place. <laughs> But being the tallest thing in a meadow (laughs) during a lightning storm is a scary proposition. And I literally had a backpack on and I ran full sprint and dove into some bushes uh, in this middle of the storm that turned really bad really quick and um, uh, ultimately passed. But that was pretty scary. Because lightning can't catch you when you're running. That that's not <laughs> Well he was holding a golf club. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's funny you said that, John, because the you know the most recent stuff is that you're better off running than you are standing under a tree. Oh, that was mm-hmm. true. And um so I mean I had no other choice. I just had to dive I had to find some kind of cover and, mm-hmm. and ultimately we um you know put up a tent and got covered and got dry and warm and let it pass. But uh, those that, that was a scary time. How the did you bit, acclimate to the alcohol, the alcohol to, the al- to the altitude? <laughs> I don't know. It was back in, back in college. I was, uh, <laughs> um, One drink at a time. The, um, my wife and I went out there four days ahead of time. We stayed in um, Frisco or Breckenridge, that area. Mm-hmm. It was about around 10,000 feet. So four days worth of that. And then um, the beginning of the trail, it takes about three or four days to get to above 10,000 feet. So the combination of those things um, allowed me to acclimate. I never had uh, that issue. Others did, but I did not. And I think it's just totally genetic. You know, it either affects you or it doesn't. Yeah. Bill, the, uh, you obviously did not go out there just for the scenery. You had a purpose. I did. What was the purpose? Well, you know, the trip took a year to plan and, and logistically and get everything 
get everything ready to go, uh, get myself ready to go. But about a couple of months before I, I left, I said, well, why am I doing this? Pretty selfish reasons. I want to do it for myself, but let's see if I can't benefit somebody as a result of this. So our Rotary Club and, and all the Rotaries participate in this, this literacy project, which we give uh, second graders moving into third grade eight to 10 books every single year of their own choosing. And we've done this for a number of years. Um, and now we do it for every single second grader in a three county area. Um, and, you know, literacy is really important, particularly in West Virginia and given the reading scores and everything. Um, you know, you hand out these books and, you know, the first first time a child came up to me and said, you know, with with uh, emotion and said, this is the first book they've ever owned. That's a very impactful statement. And, you know, the kids are just extremely excited, mostly because they chose the books. You know, I was instrumental early on in figuring this out. And that is that um, choose books, let the kids choose books they're interested in. They have much more likely to read them. They want a book on sharks. Let them get a book on sharks. Mm -hmm. Let them get a book on sports. Um, not just books their parents tell them or a teacher tells them they have to read because that's what they have to do. And you don't want to read it. And right? you don't want to read it. Yeah. That's exactly right. So it's been very successful. So I raised money uh, as part of this hike and, and dozens and dozens of folks donated. Um, um, several thousand dollars were raised uh, towards this effort. It's a costly venture. We do a number of fundraisers throughout the year to, to, to pay for this. Uh, and I thought it was a an important an important thing to do um i have a very special and personal um investment in literacy with with respect to with with respect to these children and, and uh quite frankly you know at the worst lowest times on this hike that kept me going as much as anything bill uh is it too late to donate to that absolutely not how do you do it um go to facebook page go to martinsburg sunrise rotary the link is there and uh uh, you do it right, right on a computer, and uh, or contact me directly, and I'll I'll make sure contact me on Facebook, and I'll make sure you get to the right right place. Martinsburg Sunrise Rotary on Facebook, and just follow the link. Yes, sir. That's great. So, how much do you think that you raised? You mentioned a couple thousand. Um, more than that, it's still coming in a little bit. So, um, less than ten, but certainly a few thousand dollars. And and uh, you know, a lot of it came from out of I mean out of state. I mean, folks that just knew me, or you know, mm -hmm. not just local people, but you know, people giving. 25 30 40 dollars at a time and, and that's a lot of small donations which was great what was the best part of your hike obviously the spectacular scenery um describe some of it it just i mean the collegiate west it just uh, there's no way to describe it except that when i get to the top of a pass and you actually it, your breath is taken away by the view um the san juan mountains were just spectacular beautiful color um beautiful uh streams and, and uh, meadows and you know animals and it's just it's, it's just total alone getting up in the middle of the night and seeing the milky way like like you're in the stars it's just it was spectacular i also think one of the things that i that i um really found it was really positive uh kind of restored my faith a little bit in humanity the number of people that helped you spontaneously without being asked um or offered their help was was un unbelievable. I, something I I knew was out there, but never really experienced. But you know, somebody would drive by and say, "Hey, you're hiking the trail." I said, "Yes, sir." And they said, "What do you need?" I said, "Well, I'm looking for the next water source because sometimes I, I had to carry water because there's no water for 14 miles." And they said, "Hold on a second. And they would run to the back of their truck, open a cooler, and hand me like bottles of water and give me food. Um, a friend of mine was hiking, or I, I met, and he said that the woman picked him up just because he needed a ride, and she said. I know this sounds kind of strange, but why don't you come stay at my house and, you know, I have a, an extra bedroom and uh, you can use my car and total strangers. I wow. mean, this is, this is the kind of stuff you saw on a regular basis where people would just consistently help you and, and offer you aid. And, and um, it, it, there was never any talk about some of the nonsense that people yeah. talk about these days. It was all just people helping each other and it was just fabulous. Yeah, I had the good fortune of spending my college summers in that part of the world, Bill. And that was the attitude then, and I'm glad to hear it's still the attitude now. Yeah, it was just wonderful. About a minute left. What was the low part you mentioned? Um, weather was really difficult at times. Um, the, uh, you know, being pummeled by 30 or 40 mile an hour winds while you're hiking 12, 15 miles and getting rained on and, and hailed on and, and some of those lightning issues. That was, there was some low points there. And, and, 
And some of the climbs were pretty tough, mm -hmm. <laughs> pretty tough. How do you dry out? You don't sometimes. You, you hike and your body dries it out. But I put on wet clothes in the morning more times than I can count. Bill, sum it up. You have 30 seconds. Well, I just wanted to say thank you for having me again. And, and uh, to the extent those who want to support literacy, get in touch with me on Facebook or go to the Martinsburg Sunrise Rotary or any Rotarian in the area, and they'll point you in the right direction. Yeah, Great to have you with us, by the way. It's uh, wonderful. I appreciate your stories about the trail. That was good stuff, man. Uh, Bill, it's always a pleasure to see you and visit with you, and you didn't disappoint at all today. Great stuff. Great, Great having me. Thank you. Bill Powell, former U.S. Attorney for the Northern District, just uh, back from Colorado, raising money for literacy and doing a great job, too. 